Let us pray. What we are not, make us. What we have not, give us. What we know not, teach us. In the, in the blessed name of God, who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Mark Connolly's famous play, Green Pastures, pictures God as having created a good earth. God has left men and women to care for this earth, but rebellious human beings have turned the earthly paradise into chaos. God is angry, angry enough to punish the inhabitants of the earth and bring them to their senses. But no one on earth is willing to listen to God. So God appears ready to shut the whole business and let the earth be destroyed. At the last moment, the angel Gabriel tells God about an obscure Jewish prophet on earth named Hosea. Hosea's wife has been unfaithful to her husband over and over and over again. Yet Hosea still loves this sinful woman, clings to her, and will not let her go. And then God says, is that how I must reach out to my children on the earth? Must I suffer like the poor prophet Hosea to show them how much I really love them? The play closes with the angels of heaven looking over the rim and listening to the cries of wailing that are rising up from the earth. One angel turns to another and says, look at that man carrying a cross up a hill. That's a terrible burden for one man to carry all by himself. The play leads us to a deeper truth about the truth of Christ's death on the cross. For this was not just any cross. This was the cross of Jesus, God's own beloved son. It is God who is bearing that terrible burden to show the world and all its rebellion just how far the great heart of God is willing to go to show love for humanity. Now, it is said in Jerusalem, the Via Dolorosa, Latin for way of sorrows, is the traditional route by which Jesus went from Pilate's Hall of Judgment to Golgotha, and along the way, and finally at Golgotha, moments of truth were revealed. Today, I want to focus on Pilate's truth, Pilate's reality of truth. You see, Pilate had no legitimate reason to condemn Jesus to death, so that when John writes, Pilate asked him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate asked him, what is truth? I love this passage of John because it shines light on the reality of what Pilate unknowingly reveals to us. So what is truth? Truth is hard to define. I talked with one of my colleagues who shared the following. He said, truth exists. Truth is unchangeable. Truth is eternal. Truth is spiritual. Truth is superior to the human mind and therefore Truth is God. And standing before Pilate was Jesus. Standing before Pilate was truth. That's why he could find no case against him. One of my colleagues also shared, Pilate meant it all in jest. Pilate meant it, to, meant it all in spite. Pilate meant it in cruelty. But Pilate was right. Pilate was a prophet unaware. As the representative of the most powerful nation on the world, Pilate made a sign proclaiming to the world that Jesus of Nazareth was a king. It was as if he put on the evening news or in, or in the headlines of the daily paper. 
His proclamation is there for the whole world to behold. Pilate spoke truth to the world. Jesus of Nazareth is indeed this world's king. The inscription written for all to see, Jews, Greeks, and Romans, becomes a reality of truth in spite of Pilate's intentions. So what are we to learn from this profound encounter between Jesus and Pilate? What are we to learn from Pilate? Quite simply, it is our time for truth. It is our time to be realists. As a community, it is our time for being and sharing with each other. It is our time to show compassion and mercy toward each other and all humanity. It is our time to show love through laughing with others in times of celebration, as well as weeping with those who are sad or hurt or lonely or afraid. You see, only this kind of truth gives birth to full and real community. When we share comfort, healing, forgiveness, and acceptance with one another, we become one together, leaning and depending on one another. As community, we learn we do not have to depend or bear our burdens alone. We have each other, no matter what that burden might be. There may be someone in the church community that can help us. We will, in the community of the church, Find someone who has walked where we are walking, and they give us strength to make it through. Earlier this week, I was at a session with um, a healer from Goa named Patrick San Francesco, and someone asked him a question. They said, why don't we have miracles anymore? And he looked at the person and he said, what do you mean? The lady said, no miracles. You know, like in the time of Jesus, you know all those miracles that happened with Jesus? We don't seem to have those now. And he looked at her again and he said, do not you think your waking up this morning was a miracle? And she looked at him and thought, duh. <laughs> and then he went on to say, miracles are happening every day. He told us a story about the mother and the child who were walking, and this little boy had a piece of paper that flew out of his hand, and he went to fetch the paper. And in doing so, the mother went after the child. And at that very moment, the place where they were standing, a car jumped the curb and would have killed them if they had been in that space. And he said to this lady, you see, for me, as I observed that, I thought it was a miracle. Every time we are God's presence to the other, we are a miracle. Miracles still happen. And the miracle of Jesus being in Pilate's presence, presence and Pilate asking him what is truth was indeed a miracle because Jesus knew what Jesus was about to undergo. When you leave here today, I want you to think about Pilate's lessons for us. I want you to focus on the truth within your life. Ask yourself, what is my reality of truth? And how do I use truth that is unchangeable, eternal, and spiritual to change my life? and the lives of all of those around me. I want you to remember, you have nothing to prove and everything to be. What matters is the truth of who you are, not the way you appear to others. In that pure, uncorrupted truth is an endless reservoir of real value. In that truth is beauty, goodness, love, and fulfillment beyond everything you have ever thought to seek. Give the honest truth of yourself. Give 
the authentic truth of yourself, for it is the most loving, compassionate, uplifting, uplifting and enabling thing that you can do. And then, when you have done this, make a difference in this world. Amen.